Hi friends! Welcome to a new Happy Learning video. Today we're going to learn about two types of fractions. Proper fractions and improper fractions. <laughs> to do it in a fun way, we have asked for help from this beautiful family of kittens. Oh, how cute! First, let's do a little memory check. Do you remember what a fraction is? A fraction is made up of a numerator and a denominator. For example, if we divide this bottle of milk into two parts and take one of them to give to this kitty, Number two refers to the parts we divide the unit into and the one the amount we took for the kitty. Very good! We now have reviewed how a fraction is composed. Let's go back to a proper fraction and improper fractions. Proper fractions are those fractions in which the numerator is less than the denominator. So they are less than an integer. Let's look at an example to understand things better. If we take the bottle of milk that is divided into four equal parts and we fill the bowls of the two kittens, what would the fraction be? That's it! A uh, four in the denominator, which represents the parts in which the whole is divided into, and a two in the numerator which is the part of the milk that has been taken for the kittens. This fraction, in the language of mathematics, is read two quarters. As you can see, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Great! That's a proper fraction. And the kittens are very happy. Now we're going to learn about improper fractions. Proper fractions are those fractions in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. So they are greater than the integer. How can this happen? Hmm? How can we divide more parts than the integer has? Well, it occurs when the integer is not enough and we have to take a part of another integer. And... To understand this better, here comes more kittens. Oops, they're really hungry. Suppose we have to fill these six bowls of milk for our kittens. We get the bottles and fill one, two, three, four. Uh-oh, we're out. We have to get another bottle and fill the two remaining bowls. So, we have six equal shared bowls of milk. That's six happy kittens! <coughs> Let's write this as a fraction. How many parts have we divided the bottle of milk into? Four. The four is our denominator. And how many parts of milk did we take? Six and we write it in the numerator. We have taken six quarters of the milk. It's an improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. Get it? Hmm. Uh-oh! It looks like the kittens are extremely hungry. Let's take the opportunity to look at another example to make sure you understand. We have a can of three sardines to distribute amongst our kittens. One, two, three. Oh no, we're out of sardines. Let's get another can. Four. Shh. Two little kittens have fallen asleep. We'll give them the sardines later. So, how would we write this as a mathematical fraction? 
let's think. What would be the denominator? Three. Very good. Because each can is divided into three sardines. And now we have to ask ourselves, how many parts that is? How many sardines have we given to the cats? One, two, three, and four. The number four is therefore the denominator. Our fraction is four thirds. Fantastic! You've got it. But let's keep practicing, okay? Remember that proper fractions are fractions in which the numerator is less than the denominator. And improper fractions are the fractions in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. Oh, sweet! All the kittens have fallen asleep. Shh! Bye-bye, friends. See you in the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel. Hello friends! Welcome to a new Happy Learning video! Today I want to talk to you about a very popular trio. They are the line, the ray and the segment. Have you heard of them? No? Well that's strange because even though they're not in a rap group, they are famous all over the world and they're everywhere. Just wait and see. Presenting The Line The Ray and The Segment <laughs> Oh, sorry Mr. Point, I forgot about you. <clears throat> and let's not forget The Point. <laughs> the Point is a dot. Yes, yes, the one you already know. The one you draw with the point of a pencil. It is very important to determine whether it is a line, a ray or a segment. The point is written with a capital letter. Any letter, really. This very angry point is point A. <laughs> When a bunch of points join together and go in the same direction, they form a straight line. The line is just that, a continuous line that has no beginning and no end. What does this mean? That it is infinite. <gasps> Wherever it is, it never stops. It always continues from one side to the other. Yes, I know it's hard to imagine. If you wanted to draw it as it is, it would take up all the pages of the notebooks in the world. So it's usually represented by a line with two little arrows on either end to imply that if you wanted to, you could go on and on. Lines are named with lowercase letters. I have called this line R because it is red. Hello, Line R! Now, if we cut this line with a point, what happens? Mr. Point A, can you cut this line, please? What happens is that we now have two rays. Why? Because a ray is each one of the two parts into which a line is divided from a point. Yes, the ray has a definite point of origin, which in this case is point A. But it can stretch to infinity and beyond. Now that we know the ray, Let's go back to our line. Suppose we cut it into two points. Mr. Point A, can you call a colleague? Thank you. 
Hello, point B. Can you please stand on the line? This infinite line is cut by two points. Point A and point B. What is in the middle is called a segment. A segment that we're going to call A, B. A segment is the part of a line that has a starting point an ending point. Well, we've already met the line, the ray, and the segment. And the point, of course, let's not forget the point. Remember at the beginning I said that this trio was everywhere? Look here, on the line that divides the land from the sea. On the edge of the buildings, on the train tracks, on the lampposts, on the lines of the notebook. Wherever you look, there are lines, rays, and segments. And now let's review. A line is a continuous line, which has no beginning and no end. A ray is each of the parts into which a line is divided from a point. It has a beginning, but no end. A segment is the part of a line that has a starting point and an ending point. Ah, and remember the points, which sometimes are very angry. Let's see if you have understood. On the string, which is a straight line, I'm going to put this close peg. Now it's two rays. Very good. And if I put this other one here, it's a segment. Perfect. And now I'm going to quickly finish hanging up the clothes before I go out and play. <laughs> Goodbye, friends. See you until the next video. Search us and subscribe to Happy Learning's YouTube channel.